Vaccines are being offered on the OSU campus right now. A clinic is open for students and staff. Mike McCarthy is there to find out if the university's new vaccine requirement is changing any minds. Right now, Jesse Owens North is serving as a testing site for COVID-19. And today, it's also a vaccine clinic. The first clinic since Ohio State announced it is requiring students and staff to be vaccinated. We talked with 30 students at the rec center. Most came as part of OSU's testing protocols and had at least started their vaccinations. All of my roommates are vaccinated, every single one of us. We all got vaccinated before school came back just because we knew we were going to be on campus and around everybody. More than 25% of the students we talked to said they were not vaccinated. That's similar to the overall numbers from the university. Several say they'll apply for medical and other exemptions, but some are still deciding what to do. Is OSU's requirement the only reason you're thinking about getting the vaccine now? This early on, yes. I will probably would have waited till next year. OSU is definitely, the requirement has been pushing me to get it and make a decision, I will say. So that was, that was their goal, they're doing it. You've not been vaccinated. Correct. Ohio State's saying you need to get vaccinated. Correct. What's your plan? Um, well, so far I'm looking at other options that are possibly remote, any online classes that I could take. The university's first vaccination deadline is about seven weeks away. Students who don't comply can be removed from dorms and also in-person classes for the spring. For staff members, they can lose access to email and other electronic resources, along with what the university is calling further progressive discipline. On your side at Ohio State, Mike McCarthy, ABC 6 News. Fall fever, the Big Ten is joining forces with the ACC and the Pac-12 to form a new alliance. They say the three conferences, with 41 schools total, will work together on interconference scheduling. And that means you'll see Ohio State taking on more teams from the ACC and Pac-12. The three conferences will also work together on what they say is a collaborative, a collaborative future in the future evolution of college athletics, including the structure of the NCAA down the road. We've promised each other is that we're not going to interfere with any existing contracts that exist. So this is not about getting out of contracts and blowing anything up. This is about honoring those existing contracts, but also building relationships uh, between these uh, three uh, like-minded conferences. As of right now, the conferences specifically mention schedules for football and men's and women's basketball. We'll let you know when any new games are announced. Well, you know, one lawmaker, the uh, most important lawmaker in the House, the Speaker of the House, is uh, kind of slowing this down, House Bill 248. He says that today's hearing will be the last for a while, and they'll continue to work on it, hinting that it may be on a slower path here. But for the folks who came out today in support of 248, this issue is not going away anytime soon. In all, more than a thousand people submitted testimony to the House committee discussing the bill, which would limit the state's ability to mandate vaccines. Just a fraction of those got to speak today, including those in favor of the bill and against mandates. The media, the government, and some doctors and businesses are harassing and bullying Ohioans and trying to make them feel selfish for not getting it. It'll obliterate, obliterate our anonymity and usher us into a technocratic biosecurity state that goes beyond any dystopia that we could fathom. If he mandates this vaccine and, ki and kids die around the state, is he going to be held responsible? Others oppose the bill and say it's for the common good. We all give up a little individual liberty when we comply with rules like to pull over for an ambulance, or many of us put our briefcases through metal detectors before entering into workplaces. If people would do the right thing and get vaccinated, and we would get above 85% of the people vaccinated, we wouldn't need any mandates. And while the debate was civil in the hearing room, overflow crowd watching a feed of the hearing in the atrium of the state house didn't hold back with its opinions. The risk of a truly severe adverse reaction to a vaccine is currently one in a million doses. Thank you God for her and thank you for everyone 
that is fighting for us. The group gathered to pray for a champion of House Bill 248, Representative Jennifer Gross. Today's hearing could actually be the end of the line for the bill, though. House Speaker Bob Cup putting out a statement yesterday saying he's putting a pause on hearings for the bill to continue work on it later. Gross says she's disappointed. I believe that our house will do the right thing. I believe that our house will do something. Maybe it doesn't look like 248. Now, 248 would prohibit businesses from forcing their employees to get vaccinated. Interestingly, though, business groups are opposed to that. The Ohio Business Roundtable and the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, two big business groups who have come out vocally opposing House Bill 248. More on this coming up at 6 o'clock, but for now, live on your side at the State House. I'm Tom Bosco, ABC 6 News. Tom, thank you.